Listen, kids, if you got like a foot problem, you go to a podiatrist. If you got a skin problem, you go to a dermatologist. But if you got a communist problem and you're near the 38th parallel in the Korean War, there's only one guy to go to, and that's David Bleak. It's David Bleak on today's Motivated Moments in History. <laughs> David Bleak was born in Idaho in 1932. As a kid, he was a seventh of nine children and spent his time uh, working on his farm. He dropped out of school and continued to do farm work and then got a job on a railroad. He was a mammoth of a man, six foot six and 250 pounds. Well, he got tired of working in Idaho and thought it was best to leave that rural potato laid in place and he joined the army and he goes, slay the motherfucking bodies! He joined the California National Guard in 1950 and went to basic training in Fort Riley. After basic training, he got selected to be a medic. From there, he went back west where his unit was called up to go activate to go to the Korean War. He shipped out in 1952 and was promoted to sergeant soon after hitting theater. His unit was placed in a small town near the 30th parallel on the South Korea side. By the time he got to his combat post, the war had largely stabilized and was now in a phase of just really stagnant, low-level kind of trench warfare, not much movement, but still it was yielding a high number of casualties on both sides. It was the Army's birthday that year, and David volunteered to provide medical support for a team of infantrymen as they sat out on a patrol to take a Chinese fighting position and capture a prisoner for intelligence purposes. Now, like I said before, the guy was some Hulk smash mammoth dude, and with that kind of frame, you can't be too stealth. And it wasn't long until his patrol came under enemy contact. His patrol was making it up a hill, and they came under heavy enemy machine gun fire. The blaze injured a few of his men. Well, he rushed from the rear formation and started stabilizing their wounds, then placed them in a concealed location and ran to rejoin the patrol. As they continued up a hill, another Chinese team started firing at him and wounded yet another American troop. Well, Bleak, he then ran up and dove into the enemy fight position, snapped one of those Chinese guys' necks, then grabbed another dude and choked him from the front and crushed his freaking windpipe. This dude was going all WWE over two Chinese dudes, and another commie at the same time rushed him with a bayonet. Well, David pulled out his trench knife and stabbed that dude to death. After performing a hat trick in hand-to-hand -hand combat, David ran back to his patrol and treated the wounded. When he got to his team, a grenade bounced off his comrade's helmet and landed on the ground right next to him. David tackled the soldier and laid on top of him to absorb the blast. Somehow, neither of the two were injured. It's like the grenade shrapnel saw this brontosaurus-looking American guy and was like, Oh, hell no! And blew up in the other freaking direction. The patrol found eventual success in capturing a prisoner. As they made their way back down the hill to the original positions, they were ambushed by some more Chinese. This ambush wounded three more of David's men, and he jumped over to provide them aid. Oblique himself, he was shot in the leg. Ignoring his injury, David got up and went to the wounded soldiers, treated them, and then treated his own wound. One of the men was so badly hurt that David's Caucasian John Coffee looking ass started to carry him. While he was carrying his friend downhill, two more Chinese dudes started to rush at him. He put the wounded soldier down and then grabbed the two Chinese guys by the head, one in each hand, and bashed them bastards together, fracturing at least one skull and knocking both of them out. Like, dude. This is not supposed to happen. You know, I've seen this whole head bashing thing in movies, and it was like, you know, that shit will never happen. But it did. This dude was like the ultimate warrior, but without the fruity arm tassels and steroid nipples. Now, with the two dudes knocked out, he kicked them out of his way and went back to carrying his buddy downhill. David's leg wound caused severe nerve damage and required him to be hospitalized. But he was back with his unit in just over three weeks. His tour in Korea ended shortly after, and he spent the rest of his time in the Army in Japan. In late October that year, upon returning to the States, he was awarded the Medal of Honor. 
He left the Army as a staff sergeant. When he got out, he returned to Idaho and then moved to Wyoming where he worked as a truck driver, a grocery store meat cutter, and a rancher. In 1966, he moved back to Idaho and became a dairy farmer for the next decade. He eventually took on a job as a janitor and rose up through the custodial ranks of the Idaho National Engineering Laboratory until his retirement in the mid-1990s. He died in March 2006 and was cremated and had his ashes poured into the waters of his favorite Idaho fishing spot. In 1995, a TMC was named after him at Fort Sill. You can see his Medal of Honor today at the Idaho Military History Museum right alongside of the Medal of Honor for another Idaho native and Civil War Navy hero, Gurdon Barter. When well, that, kids, is your motivated moments in history. <laughs>